Howdy y'all, this is just going to be a quick tutorial on how to make monsters in an old photo style like I do on TikTok. Alright, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to try to keep this as uh, short as possible as to not waste your time. So first you want to pick a background image, and I go out and take my own. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about running into any copyright issues or anything like that. Plus, it gives me a little bit more versatility. Sometimes when you go out and take your own pictures, you can kind of imagine what you would see standing there. Just be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to like trespass on anybody's land or anything and then, you know, get in trouble. Next, after you have your background put up, you want to go ahead and make a new layer. This is the layer you're going to start drawing on. Uh, I'm using Infinite Painter, but you can do this in pretty much any program uh, that uses multiple layers. And as you can see here, I start off, I'm, I'm just adjusting my brush. Um, work with brushes that you're comfortable with. There's no one brush that is universally great for everybody. Um, and that's a that's an issue that like a lot of people ask me, oh, what brushes do you use? It doesn't matter what brushes I use. The brush that I'm using here is, I'm pretty sure, the manga brush. So yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm blocking in my monster. Now I make a few mistakes. I can't get it to look how I want it to look and you'll see me change it up. And that's very important. One of the parts of making a monster, uh, especially in this type of format, is you want to have a good profile to it. You often hear that said about like designing cars or designing spaceships for sci-fi things, but it works for monsters too. Uh, you know, a recognizable profile, uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying profile, I mean silhouette silhouette a recognizable silhouette an imposing silhouette something that without detail can catch your eye um, you see that I was working on this one here uh, like that but uh, it wasn't really catching me so I changed it up here in a moment but while I'm speeding through this I'll talk more about brushes really it is about finding a brush that you're comfortable with the manga brush that I typically use I use the manga brush the soft round and a dry ink uh, brush in Infinite Painter. But honestly, it is about what you are most comfortable with. Um, to some people, those brushes don't work for them. Like I said earlier, there is no one universal brush that will work for everybody. Brushes aren't magical. It's what you put into it. With that said, when you find the brush that works for you or the set of brushes that work for you, it might feel magical. It really does at times because it's just like, oh yes, I love how that went down for me. I, I, and I love how I've gotten used to how this digital ink flows from this uh, digital pen. All right, so here in a moment, I'm getting ready to show you how to do something that I, w I didn't know how to do for a long time, and that's to make a mask layer in Infinite Painter. Now, a lot of art programs have mask layers, and they all pretty much work the same. So this is very important because this is how you're going to add your detail without going over the lines. Because if you don't know how to do this, you could do it the way I used to. And that was uh, going in and just trying not to go outside of my lines and messing everything up. So you want to just hold down and swipe your layer to the right. Just like that. Swipe it to the right. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't, but you just got to keep trying to do it. Now comes a very vital part of getting your image to look realistic. Study the image that you have used as your background. Study how the lighting is working in it. Where's your light source coming from? That is what's going to affect your shadows on your creature. This works for every drawing. If you're even just making your own background, pick your source of light before you start drawing. Then, when you're doing your drawing, make sure everything works in that aspect. You can fix it after the fact. Trust me, I've done that plenty of time. uh, times. Go in and, and just try to fix it after the fact, but that is a lot more work for you. And then here, I'm just deciding on what color do I want my monster to be. And I, I tend to go for more earthy colors, which are browns and reds, uh, things that... that look like they could actually exist in the real world. Remember when you're doing yours, you don't have to do that. You can choose outlandish colors. If you want it to be rainbow color, go for it. It is your monster, it is your drawing, it is your picture. 
do it how you want to do it. Just because I choose earthy tones does not mean that. Just because I choose more realistic proportions or things that work together like how I've done doesn't mean you have to do it that way either. If you want it to look realistic, yeah, you, you might want to try to go for like things that are in the wild already. As you can see with this thing, I chose to kind of copy ostrich feet. Ostrich feet I've always found fascinating, and so I have them in my mental visual library, uh, just locked away in there, just waiting to use them whenever I get the chance. And if you look at a lot of the monsters that I draw over on TikTok and on Instagram, you'll see a lot of feet that look a lot like ostrich feet. Bird feet are awesome. They really are. I mean, they go back how many millions of years? I mean, dinosaurs had bird feet. Dinosaurs were birds. Reptilian feet are cool. So, yeah. After you have the base color of your subject colored in, you want to go in and add your details. And that is the shadows, the highlights, and everything on, on your subject. And that's really where it starts to come to life. Because it goes from being this flat uh, blob of color that most people can't really see what you're going for. And then it starts to breathe life into it. I see a lot of people uh, try to make monsters and stuff without uh, doing So it's really important because they'll come to me and they'll... Um, so it's really important because they'll come to me and they'll... Um, so it's really important because they'll come to me and they'll like, Hey, why doesn't mine look as realistic as yours? And if I tell them you're not you're not adding shadows or, or highlights. They, they're, they're not too happy with that. I've been called rude. And I'm just like, well, it's just a fact. You've got to do that. And what I've done here is I'm going to merge all the layers. Because at a certain point with Infinite Painter, if you don't do that, it will crash. Now, if you're doing something like this in Photoshop, maybe don't worry about it. But I suggest doing it. And then... Don't fear doing changes. Make changes to your creature as you go. Because, yeah, it's a little strange to have something that looks almost finished and then cut it up like I'm about to do. But don't fear it. Don't fear change. Because this is, this is your drawing that we're going to be talking about, right? You do it how you want it. And if you're not happy with it, make changes. In traditional art... People will paint over paintings. There, there are hundreds of paintings that I know of that they have found after scanning that have other paintings underneath of them. The benefit of digital painting is we don't have to do that. Now you might see up there I got different layers with copies of it. Because that's a good little tip. If you're afraid you're going to mess something up and you have the, the, the RAM resources, duplicate the layer. That way you feel safe. There are plenty of times, though, when I do them and I don't duplicate the layer and I still get through the whole project. And it's fine. It's fine. And remember, there's always happy accidents. Now, I don't recall if I had a happy accident in this one, but that term exists for a reason. Because you can just do something and it it's like a complete mistake, but holy crap, it works perfectly for what you're doing. And that's one of the things I want to talk about here, um, is that in art, it takes time. There's no one quick way to get your artwork to look the way that you want it to. There are tons of videos out there that'll be like this one simple trick that'll make your art look uh, massively impressive or realistic as fuck. But there really isn't. There's not one simple tip for that. Uh, they can give you tips that will be helpful for you but you have to practice those tips you have to work on it you have to hone those skills because a thing that a lot of people make a mistake of is thinking that art is talent there are artists out there who are talented but a skill which is what art is in my opinion for most people is something that can be honed yeah, you can hone talent, but what I've noticed in my life is a lot of people with talent kind of reach a point 
and they feel like that's it. They don't need to do more. And I'm not trying to uh, take a dump on them or anything. That just seems to be the consensus. But someone who develops a skill s tends to keep trying. They tend to not be able to reach that point that they want to get to. And yeah, that can be frustrating. It's it's like it's like a, a a drug addict trying to get that high, but you're just trying to get it through art. So it's a lot healthier, unless all you do is sit and draw and you don't eat and drink water and do anything else that makes you human. Uh, that that can be a problem. So don't do that. Don't become so obsessed with getting things to look right that you starve yourself to death. However, there is nothing wrong in trying to improve your your skills all right so right here I'm trying to show exactly what I was doing by cutting it up and moving it around because realistically it wasn't balanced for how the road is shaped and I'm gonna draw some arrows here and see it's leaning it should be p pivoting more and putting more weight on that one leg right there because this is a bipedal creature it's not gonna just be like out in the open like that it would fall over Right here, it looks like it's slipping on the wet road, so it needs to be fixed. So yeah, as you can see, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to crop out the body and the other leg, and just try to make it look a little bit better. And there's also a funny little thing about doing this. You can fudge it. You can fudge it a little bit. As long as it looks close enough, most people aren't going to call it out. That's a little lazy, yeah. But sometimes in art, you do got to be just a, a tad bit lazy or else you're going to drive yourself insane trying to get things to look right. And at this point, I would have said that I would have benefited from references. And that's another thing that Infinite Painter has in it that I really like. You can import an image as a reference. I already have this thing looking a little bird-like the way that it's running. I already know I made its feet based off an ostrich. I should have just pulled in an image of an ostrich, or at least several images of ostriches running towards a camera, and that could have helped me out a whole lot, especially in the beginning when I was doing the loose sketch, the uh, blocking, but I kind of work in a manner that isn't really intuitive. I'm going at it quick, I'm going at it uh, trying to get an idea uh, that I don't know that I have out of my head. That's basically how I work. And it's not the smartest. But as you can see, I had to adjust the ankle there. And that gave it that ankle joint that most birds and ostriches... Uh, ostriches are birds. Most birds have. You know, most living creatures have ankle joints. So it needed that. And I accidentally made it when trying to balance out the creature. And all I'm doing right here is just showing the difference between the uh, original way I had it standing and then the updated way where I shifted the weight just to show how much of a difference it makes because it no longer looks like it's falling. At least in my opinion, it doesn't look like it's falling. So when I'm done toying around with it here, I don't remember how much I messed with it. I think maybe I wrote some notes. Yes, there are some notes. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I wrote some notes to make sure I was keeping up with what I was doing. Um, you gotta remember, I recorded this originally back before November. Uh, sometime in October is when I recorded this. I don't remember everything I had put into it. Um, so yeah... That's that's a little embarrassing that I couldn't remember there. Uh, but that's the way life goes. I did have audio for this before, and I lost it. For anyone who uh, hasn't been up on it, uh, on the information about this video, since I promised its release the first week of November of 2020. So, again, I want to ask, right now, while there's nothing really going on uh, in the video, Please forgive me for that. I am sorry it's taken so long. It was just one thing after another after another. This video kept getting messed up. And I just, I had a hard time wanting to work with it. What am I writing here? I don't remember. It's so small. I couldn't, I can't see it. Because in the preview that I'm looking at, 
everything is super tiny. Everything's super tiny. So I'm trying to go off of the super tiny stuff and remember what I did several months ago. Oh, at least now I'm zoomed in. But the words are gone. So what you're seeing here is I am still trying to get this thing to look balanced. And maybe I should have fast forward through all of this, but I want to show it. Um, I've already, I think I've already fast forwarded through a little bit of it. Can't recall. Thought I did a lot more of it. Um, because I worked on this thing for a couple of hours. I'm, so I got this down to 35 minutes. I know I did not work on this for just 35 minutes. But I pulled out the liquify tool, which is one of my favorite tools. And it's pretty much the only reason why I'm thinking about using Photoshop on my computer is because that's where I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where the liquify tool started was in Photoshop. So yeah, this is a tool you have to be very careful with. It takes practice to get used to it because you can mess everything up. And I remember back in the day, once you liquefied something, there was no undo. There was no undo for some reason way back in the day. And I'm talking about way, way back in the day. So here I am just trying to make sure I'm happy with the way the weight distribution of this creature is. And I'm pretty sure I'm going in to add highlights again. Um, I'm not sure. I hate that I'm not sure. Yes, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding highlights because I'm like, it still looks flat. So I'm still trying to make this look more three-dimensional. And it's, even if it's just real subtle, real subtle, add them in, add in the highlights. I know my light source is very diffused because it was a very cloudy and rainy day when I took that picture. But the source of light is still above the creature for the most part. So the highlights need to come from that. Now I do knock the highlights down a little bit because these are way too intense for the lighting situation that I have that was going on that day. And this would be a really good time to remind everyone, I am not a professional. I have no real formal training in art. I was in an art school through the mail for a couple of weeks before I dropped out of it. I took uh, intro to art in a community college. Um, everything I've learned, I've pretty much learned from YouTube. And there are people out there who have much better lighting tutorials than I do. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. I think I may have accidentally took a screenshot. But now I'm going in and adding the shadow on the ground. This is very important. Look for shadows sample them whatever try to get close to other shadows in the environment um, sorry about jumping around on what i'm talking about but yeah and make sure your shadows look realistic now like i said i've kind of made it where my light source is almost directly above it so the shadow would be pretty much below it uh, i do have the shadow going a little bit in Perhaps I could have done this better. Uh, but if we're going to finish up the picture like I do at the end uh, of it, sometimes, again, I come back to fudging it. Uh, and, and, and honestly, it works at times. Uh, remember, the shadows will not be 100% intense everywhere. Especially in such diffused light especially when you're working with such thin appendages uh, because the road is wet you have bounce light which i do not think i added bounce light to this which sucks because that could have helped make it look even more uh, realistic and that's that's a strange thing about lighting right the drawing itself does not look too realistic but if you can get the lighting to look correct or even close enough to correct. That's good enough to uh, convey uh, to someone at a glance that it's realistic looking. And most people do not look at art beyond, I, th I think the st there, there was a study that was done a, a while back that I had read that most people don't look at art, uh, but for like 
I think it's not even a full second. So you just really have to... Art. I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Art is pretty much just tricking someone for that millisecond of view. And here I'm getting ready to flash on screen. This is the point of no return. Because we're going to merge all the layers. And Infinite Painter does have some issues where it might crash. So... Uh, this is a, uh, as uh, Bob Ross would call, a bravery test. Because once you fuse it down, uh, merge it down, you might lose it. You might. Make sure you save, make a new save, make multiple saves if you don't feel safe. Um, as you can see me doing here. And here is where a lot of people kind of call it the magic. I, I, you also need to delete all your extra layers, especially since you've made multiple saves. So those files still exist, but this is its own file and, uh, it's time to adjust the colors and that's up here in that little compass looking, uh, thing. You go down over to your edit and then down here, right there, colors, colors. Oh yeah. I always have trouble finding it don't know why I use this program a lot and just adjust it to your heart's content adjust it till the lighting looks right to you this is your very first step of making the creature blend with the background because now that it's all on one layer this color adjustment works all together the next thing we'll do is go and add filters this is where we get the old picture look Go up to edit again. Right next to color is the filters. In Infinite Painter, these are the three most important. Blur, stereo, and grain. Adjust the blur very, very lightly. Do not add a ton of blur because it will just completely ruin the image. Because this isn't the same as blur and everything else. Now I go on ahead and throw in some other filters. You can toy around with other filters, but the main ones you want to use are blur, stereo, and grain. And a little goes a long way. Look at stereo on default. I have to drop that all the way down. Most of the time I drop it down to about a two to a five. I can't remember what I did here. I can't see it again. It's too small in the video preview for me, but yeah. Um, and there you have, I mean, already it's pretty basic looks like an old picture and then there's the grain there's the grain again don't add too much see adding too much is just a it's just out there so yeah adjust the grain look zoom in look around make sure you're not losing too many details but if you do lose details that's just the nature of the beast if you've seen some of the art that i've uploaded to tiktok you'll know that there are some things i put a ton of detail in and then adjust things and that detail's gone. All I'm doing here is just trying to get the picture to look like someone took it right before they were trampled to death. I think that was the story I gave for this, is that the camera was found next to the body after it had been after the person had been trampled. Maybe they were partially eaten? I can't remember now. I, I really should have went back and paid attention to the video, but I, you know, that's where you come up with the story. Uh, what is the story behind what has happened? And, oh yes, I forgot. This is me showing how other filters, um, can change things. You know, oh, it's a panic zoom. This person was moving. Honestly, go and look at older pictures. Um, that will help you a lot. Study older pictures. If you want to do a picture that looks like it's from the 90s, like I think I did here, look at pictures that were taken in the 90s. How did a 90s camera, you know, a consumer camera work? Because mo if it's something like this, it's not going to be like someone had this high-end camera and everything was crisp and cutting edge looking. No, it's going to be a, a pretty crappy camera. This could be a disposable camera. And from what I recall in the 90s, a lot of disposable cameras leaned heavily, heavily on yellow light. Um, I'm thinking what happened here 
was Infinite Painter crashed. And I had to reopen it. And I had lost all the video effects. Yeah, that's what happened. And again, I love Infinite Painter. Uh, it is a program that I am used to. But man, does it have bugs. I love it for what it can do and in spite of its faults. <laughs> that was a very cornball fake laugh, wasn't it? That was disgusting. I should feel more grossed out. And no, that wasn't a mistake. I intended to leave that in there. So really, once you get to the end, it's all about a lot of fiddling around and, and trying to get your image to work for the story that you're trying to tell. Even if you're not telling people uh, stories based on the pictures, it helps to have a story in your head. It really does. Um, I can't remember, I think this was the first time that I was really toying around with this spin uh, tool here. Uh, spin blur I think maybe is what it's called I can't recall uh, but I kind of like the effect that it was giving kind of gave the um, camera a little bit of a turn but again when you do these effects it can be easy to want to just everything maxed out the higher everything is the more realistic and ultimately what you get is just a bunch of noise uh, sure, that can work for some images, but you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. Don't max your settings out. Very tempting. Very tempting. I still catch myself doing that, and then I have to go back. Um, especially in the color area, I will max something out, and I will think it looks fine for a long time, and then I have to just open up an old save because I'm paranoid afraid I'm going to lose everything because Infinite Painters are going to crash. And so I'll have five or six different save files for an image. The longer I work on it, the more save files there are. Some of them have only one save file, and uh, I know the Kirsches, they both have about 20 save files a piece between, yeah, 20, 20 save files a piece. And, uh, man, I, I don't like the Kirsches. Uh, oh, those, those crash so much. All right, so I go ahead and I say thanks for watching here. I sign my piece because it's finished. It's done. That's what ended up being uploaded to TikTok. Uh, that's the image I ended up uploading to my Instagram. And then here at the end, I just wanted to take a moment to just say art. Is something anyone can do. I honestly think anybody can do art. As I said earlier, it's a skill and all skills can be learned. I have seen people in my life who, for all intents and purposes, society would say shouldn't be able to make art, and they have, um, because they wanted to make art. And so the most important thing to do is just, if you want to make art, dedicate time to making art. And I understand that sounds difficult. Because a lot of people, and, and we're kind of taught instant gratification. If I'm not instantly good at something that second, then I'm not ever going to be good at it. Or it is something wrong with me, is, is what we're taught to think. But trust me, this is, I, I am 33, getting ready to turn 34. This is decades of practice. And I should be way better, but I took nearly a 10-year gap in between really focusing on art. Real quick, before I forget what's going on in the background, this is just me getting everything set up for the actual TikTok video. If you don't know, Infinite Painter actually can record your drawing for you so that's how it's done and so I'm just exporting it right there so yeah nothing nothing weird not doing really anything of any more detail if you need to know how to do it I pretty much showed you right there so if you want to go back and take a glance at it 
Um, but yeah. And back at this time, I uh, just uploaded these videos directly. Um, and the only reason why I say pictures was so that I could upload those pictures to Instagram. But back to what I was saying. You want to make art? Make art. Don't be discouraged if your first piece of art that you've done doesn't look perfect. Don't be discouraged if your 90th piece of art does not look perfect. Don't be discouraged if your 1,000th piece of art does not look perfect. Look back at your older drawings. Look back at your older artwork. Are you improving? That's what's important. Make sure you improve. Because failure, failure is just you taking another step in improving. What is the Adventure Time quote? Sucking is the first step of becoming great at something. What, what is it that Jake says in the show? I can't remember. But it is such a profound thing to say. Why am I drawing all over this? What was the point of this? I don't remember. Let's just ignore what's going on in the video. Because I already technically ended the video. There's nothing new happening here. Uh, I'm just messing around with it. I'm just drawing all over it. What in the world? And I'm distracting myself right now. Oh, yes. I'm showing how, after I added the effects, I lost details. There we go. The eyes are gone. Boo-hoo. That's so sad. That's just, again, like I said earlier, the nature of the beast of doing art like this. You're going to lose stuff that you put detail in. De stuff that you spent time on. And that comes right back around to, you know, learning. You want to do something, it's not going to be instant. And I know people don't like hearing that. I know people hate that. People want everything to be instant. We're, we're taught that everything is instant. And instant gratification, mm, it feels nice. And I'm not saying you have to spend 20 years drawing monsters to reach my level. No, I did not intend to be an artist. I didn't want to be an artist. I didn't. <laughs> so I just did things passively in the background of my life. Doing art on TikTok has been the most art I've probably done in my entire life. In fact, it's probably been the most completed works I've ever done in my entire life. And that is insane. That is insane. And you can go back and you can look at my most recent monsters that I've made to my first monster that I've made, and you can see how much improvement has happened with near daily practice. So get out there and practice your drawings. Do it if you really want to. And I just want to take the time to thank everybody who made it to the end here. I can't believe it's the end of the video. I thought I had a few more minutes to go and had to delete half a encouraging rant. So again, thank you all again, and I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope this was well worth the several-month wait. Thanks.